Hey folks, welcome to this edition as the three of us share our uh, biblical insight on certain scriptures. First of all, let me just tell you who the three of us are. First of all, I, I'm the host today, Pastor Carl Gallops, and you can find me at carlgallops.com, carlgallops.com. And then, of course, we have with us Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt. Zev is in his studio. You can see the background and the cameras around him. He's in his production studio, and he is in Tel Aviv, Israel right now. And uh, we've got like an eight our difference between us as we are filming this right this moment. And then your website is messiahofisraelministries.com, correct, Zeph? messiahofisraelministries.com.org or .net. Okay, fantastic. And then we also have with us Pastor Casper McLeod. Pastor Casper ministers just north of Atlanta. I'm going to let him tell you the exact city and the name of his church and his website. But Pastor Casper McLeod um, comes out of a rock and roll background but uh, and, and quite accomplished in that area. And matter of fact, still uh, ministering to a lot of his old rock and roll buddies and, and, and a part of uh, concerts with them and ministering the gospel of Jesus among them. Some of those guys have come to the Lord and maybe Casper can tell you about that. But uh, so we all come from unique backgrounds. I come out of 10 years of Florida law enforcement and now 33 years as a pastor on the Gulf Coast. So that's who the three of us are. And we're here to discuss today um, a certain passage of scripture. Before we do, Pastor Casper, tell us where your website is and how to get a hold of you. You can reach us at the upperroomfellowship.org. And uh, we're in Old Grounds, uh, Georgia, it's northern Georgia. Okay. Don't forget me at caspermcleodmusic.com, just okay. if you want that music connection. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I know a lot of people will. Well, again, the three of us are in ministry affiliation, and we have been for years. And what I mean by that is, is we don't tell each other how to run each other's ministry, and we don't have articles and constitutions and rules written up. We just love each other in the Lord. And we've been ministering together, I mean, intimately together for years now. That is, we travel together, we do conferences together, we do television interviews together, we do radio interviews together, some of them at the national level. An international level. The Lord has just really blessed us each individually with the platforms he's given us, but he's also blessed us collectively as a group. And uh, this ministry affiliation also includes Brandon Gallops, my son, who's an associate pastor up in uh, Cleveland, Alabama, Redeem Ministries. It also includes Mike Shoesmith, who uh, hails from Canada, right outside of Toronto. But uh, he is the executive editor of the PNN News and Ministry Network, a network that the three of us are all affiliated with in producing uh, videos and uh, and blogs and posts and all of that. So it's quite a ministry affiliation, and it's an honor to be here with you today, guys. Well, let's get right to it. So we are going to discuss, and Zev, if, if it's all right with Casper, we'll start with you. But we're, we're focused in today on the scripture, world famous football players put it under their eyes with blackout, and it, I mean with, with black makeup, and, and we see it on posters, we see it on billboards, John 3.16. Now, I know some of our viewers are thinking, well, I already know all about John 3.16. Well, I bet you don't. <laughs> Just stay tuned and listen to this broadcast because we're going to bring you some insight on John 3.16 that perhaps either you've never heard before or you haven't thought about in a long time. We're going to begin with Zev because Zev born and raised in Israel, lives in Tel Aviv, ministers in Tel Aviv, comes from an Orthodox Jewish family. Father was a rabbi, his grandfather was a rabbi, his great-grandfather was a rabbi. He was studying to be a Sanhedrin rabbi when he found Jesus Christ and as Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. He now ministers all over the world, and he's all over television and radio and in conferences speaking, but he primarily, his heart is to reach Jews for Jesus right in the middle of Israel. So Zev, uh, why don't you tell us your perspective of John 3.16 and how that figures into your ministry to Israel and to the Jews? Well, I'm excited about this program over here. I think that it's important uh, for people around the world to see uh, the connection between uh, Jews and the nations working the harvest together. This is why I'm excited about it. You mentioned football players putting it under their, uh, under their eyes and everything. Well, that's yeah. one of the reasons that it's uh, really provoking the Jews to jealousy, Romans 11, 11, and in the process of provoking them to jealousy, the ones who don't want Jews to believe in Jesus and Yeshua, his Hebrew name, are the ones that are coming out and saying, wait a minute, guys, this is not something Jewish. This is not something from the scriptures. This is something invented by Christianity. 
this whole John 3.16 stuff is not something we read in the Bible. Well, that's absolutely not true because everything in the New Testament, what we call, and in Hebrew it's not even the New Testament, it's the Renewed Testament. Yeah. Because there's nothing new there. It's only scripture that Yeshua is uh, fulfilling. He is the Word. And in, the, in, the, in John 3.16, we find it many places, but especially in Psalms chapter 2. Yeah. In Psalms chapter 2, I'm not going to read the whole chapter here right now. I encourage the people to go there and read it. Psalms chapter 2 talks about God is anointed. It speaks about you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Today you've been born. Today you're going to talk about Jesus in the flesh, Yeshua. But it says something in John 3, 16. It says that he is the Messiah, the King of kings for all nations. That's what it says over there. And blessed are those who take refuge in him. But kiss the son, least you perish. And I'm paraphrasing for various points of the whole, uh, the whole chapter. Well, that's John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Well, when was it prophesied that he would give his only son? In Psalms chapter 2. Right. Psalms chapter 2 was written thousands of years before Messiah was even born right. by King David or by David under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So, so, so God so loved the world. Yes, he did. And it's written in Psalms chapter 2. And the whole chapter not only shows that he, when we say love the world, well, uh, Psalms chapter 2 says that he's the Messiah for, love for all the world, for the whole nations. Isn't that John 3, 16? Right. And many times we're challenged by Orthodox rabbis and uh, various names. I could name one of the names here. We're not, we're not against him or anything, but he keeps on uh, coming out with these accusations. And I'll mention his name, Tobias Singer. He's yeah. very much well known. Yeah. And he comes out and says, look, guys, this whole uh, Christianity is not true. Uh, he's not the Messiah, Jesus, John 3, 16. They love to quote John 3, 16. It's not even in the Bible. It's not a concept. When we teach Jews, especially Jews who don't believe in Yeshua, about Psalms 2, and we show the connection with John 3, 16, that they're not only fascinated, they, they're shocked. Because yeah. if you take John 3, 16 on, on one side of the screen, and you put Psalms 2 on the other side of the screen, you see the same thing. It's the same prophecy fulfilled through Messiah Yeshua. It's the most Jewish concept you'll ever read in the Bible. And when I say Jewish concept, Casper uh, and, and, and Pastor uh, uh, Carl, I'm not talking about Jewish concept as far as Judaism. I'm talking about the Israel, the, the scriptures that were given first to the Jews and then were, were given out to the nations. The first believers were, were Messianic Jews. They were Jews that believed in Jesus. That's what I mean when I, when I talk about that. Right. They, didn't, they didn't just one day wake up and... Uh, when, when that was quoted, John 3, 16, it wasn't something new. It wasn't something, it was something renewed. Renewed from where? Renewed from the Messianic prophecies. Man, that, that is amazing to think of that connection of John 3, 16 to the, um, to the Psalms and to Psalm 2. But you're right. It is the message of the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. John 3, 16, it's all about God restoring paradise and showing his love and mercy to those who would receive his offer of salvation through Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor Casper, give us your insight on this. Well, we consider John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is the gospel. I mean, so what is that? that God's only begotten son is born of the line of David. Um, he's, he's the man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He dies for our sins. He's, he's buried and, and then he's resurrected. And, and, and so many people think of this as a great tragedy when it was the greatest victory. Yes. Um, and then we look at this, we, we, we share that with people, with, uh, unbelievers perhaps, you know, John 3.16, and we're looking at what is the gospel? What is the good news? Well, the amazing part of it is our salvation doesn't depend on our performance. When right. I'm ministering to people that don't know the Lord, often they'll tell me they're going to heaven because they're a good person. Yeah. Well, there's a problem with that. There are no good people. Clearly, the scripture tells us we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Um, and when we think about um, Nicodemus, when we we're talking about the, the, the Sanhedrin, the, the great scholars of the day, right? Um, what happened with that? I mean, he's a well-respected man of our town, doing all the best things so conservatively for all you Kings fans. And um, John 3, right? And he, he comes, he goes, hey, look, we know that you, God sent you because you couldn't have been doing any of this stuff unless the Lord's behind it. 
And straight away, the Lord Jesus Yeshua cuts to the chase, getting straight to the heart of the matter. He goes, listen, nobody's going to see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Well, that blows his mind. How can you be <laughs> born again? Can you get back into your mom and be born a second time? He doesn't understand it. And the wind's blowing, you know, I, I'm imagining so because the Lord uh, Jesus Yeshua says, um, hey, the wind blows where it wants. Those where it wants the sound of it. You, mean, you don't understand that. So how can I tell you about quantum physics and string theory? Yeah, how can I right. tell you about these higher concepts if you can't even grasp the earthly things? Um, <laughs> but this is, I mean, I'm sure this all shocked him, right? Yeah. Um, here's the, the son of God saying, actually, no, it doesn't matter how good you are, how religious you are. Unless you're born again, you can't come into the kingdom of heaven. And you can only come in through me. And I, I love Rabbi Zab's teaching when we were doing a conference together where he showed how, um, and I want to, you tell him that part, that how they had a crossover uh, of blood on, on the doorway. On the threshold, yeah. On the threshold, right? Yeah, he spoke this of the a, threshold covenant, yeah. Right, so it's, it's you know, again, you just, you just come to the Lord as you are, right? We got a great song that we used to have at the Billy Graham Crusades, just come as you are in all the Baptist churches, right? Just right. come as you are, and the Lord will clean you up. He'll do what he needs to do here. Um, just, just as I am, without one plea. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, none, none are, of us are, but not leaving as you are. Here, right? So, right. <laughs> right. Uh, well, well, thank you, Pastor Casper. Uh, uh, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat, um, he was speaking about the threshold covenant. Why don't you take a minute and talk about that just to make that clear to our viewers, and then I'll weigh in on this, and then we'll be out of here for today's edition. But why don't you weigh in on that, Brother Zev? I will, but there's something. I know we're pressed for time on the program, but there's something as you're speaking. You know, he was reading, he was quoting uh, John 3.16 in English. And in Hebrew, it's Ki Ahav Elohim et Haolam Ad Ki Natan Ed Bno Yechido Leman Lo Yuvat Kol Amamin Bo Ela Enchal Chayel Olam. But the word we see something in Hebrew that you don't really see in English is Ad. The word Ad, and the word Ad means until, but it also means eternity. So we can see here the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, even in that Bible passage, John three sixteen, when it's quoted in Hebrew. It's so powerful. Yeah. Uh, regarding the threshold covenant, uh, what do we have? Three and a half hours? Uh, no, no, we've got about a minute. But you, you just explain what you mentioned that in a in a conference, or you taught on it. But he just mentioned it, so just very quickly let the audience know basically what that is. The threshold covenant is speaking about uh, the covenant that Jesus Yeshua fulfilled, and we say the new covenant. What covenant did he fulfill? He fulfilled the threshold covenant, which speaks about. Uh, entering the door, and the door is Messiah Yeshua, it's Jesus. You need to, to cross over the threshold in order to, uh, to plead the blood of Jesus and to enter into the kingdom. And this is what Jesus spoke about also in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. If anybody, uh, I, behold, I'm not going to door. If anybody lets me in, I will come in and sup with him. This yeah. sup with him is speaking about the kingdom, and it's speaking about the threshold covenant. I don't have yeah. too much to go into it. Yeah. But it's That's all good. what Pastor Casper uh, mentioned right here. It's all about the blood. It's all about entering in. Yes. Uh, you must be born again, and that's part of it. Yes. I, I just want to add at that point, um, you know, a lot of times people are using, you know, the, the full steps to salvation, right? Behold, I knock on the door. Well, that's written to the church. Yes. It's written to the believer, not the unbeliever, because, you know, a lot of people don't understand that part. I mean, we think like, okay, just, um, you know, I got saved. I'm just going to, you know, not be a, a bad person anymore. I'm going to do good things, going to give money, behave well, all that, you know, right. help the poor. But there's a lot more to it than that. So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, once you get in the water, then the Lord's going to show you how to swim. Right. That's good. Well, listen, here's what I'll do to wrap it up. I want to give this insight on John 3.16. Listen, John 3.16 is tied to Zechariah 12. And of course, it's tied to John chapter 1 in a precious, beautiful way that explains a specific word that's used in John 3.16 that has confused people for ages. But yet when you understand it, it is so beautiful. It is so powerful. First, let's think about Zechariah 12, where God says, through the prophet Zechariah, he says, and on that day, and he's speaking of the day that the sacrifice will be made, the day that the fountain will be opened in Jerusalem. But he says, and on that day, you will look upon me whom you have pierced. You will look upon, you will, but, but you will mourn for him as an only son. In other words, 
God is talking and he's saying, when you look, when you look at the what you will call the only son of God on the cross, you are looking at me. On that day, you will look upon me whom you have pierced, but you will mourn for him as an only son. Well, wow, that sounds like it comes right out of John 3.16 as well, because, because we hear in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only son, his only begotten son. All right, now think of John chapter one, guys. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and at the same time, the word was with God, and at the same time, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and in that word that became flesh, we, we observed, we saw, we lived with, we touched, we smelled, we felt the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Then John 3.16 segues into and God, this God from heaven, this word, this, this power of the universe, this mind, this conscience of everything, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that word only begotten comes from the King James. It's an English phrase. We very seldom use it in our modern English language. So the more modern translations translate it, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, or they say he gave his unique son, I like that word unique. It comes from a Greek word that means all of those. You look it up in the Greek dictionary and it will say it means unique, one and only. Uh, and, and, and because the thought here is, no, he wasn't born from God. Like he wasn't created by God. This is God. This is the word that has become flesh. So the concept is this is God's one and only time, the one and only way his unique presentation of himself to the world. Through this one where God said in Zechariah 12, remember what God said, he said, you will look upon me that day whom you have pierced. But you, from the earthly realm, from the physical point of view, you will mourn for him as an only son. But remember, it's me that day whom you have pierced. So when we think of it like that, we're understanding the love of God is beyond our imagination. The power of God is beyond our imagination and that he loved us so much. Yes, we see God present himself as a man in the Old Testament, in, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, he walked with them, to Abraham, uh, to Joshua, to, uh, to, to Rahab. I mean, not Rahab, um, Hagar. He appears to Hagar, Yahweh in the flesh. So, the, so you say, well, is that Jesus? Well, it's God in the flesh but we don't know him as Yeshua HaMashiach until that one unique time when an embryo is implanted in the womb of a young woman and then God himself, the word, in that embryo becomes flesh and dwells among us. God so loved the world that he gave his unique presentation of himself, one and only time he would do it, to present himself as our Savior. You will look upon me that day whom you have pierced, declares the Lord. John 3.16 is packed with supernatural power, isn't it, guys? Sack, oh, packed, packed with supernatural revelation. And I want to thank both of you, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat, thank you so much for being a part of the show today and, um, and giving us the unique Hebrew perspective, for sure. And, um, and, and we love you, and we appreciate what God's doing in your ministry over there in Tel Aviv, Israel, and around the world. Well, thank you, uh, Casper and uh, Carl, Pastor Carl. It's always an honor and blessing to be here. And, and like I said in the beginning of the show, I'm very excited about these programs because I think that the concept of the one new man is the heart of the Father. Yeah, thanks. And thank you, Pastor Casper McLeod up in Ball Ground, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. What an amazing ministry you have. Not only are you reaching church folks and prophecy conference attenders, but you're also reaching a segment of our, our society that was kind of lost in the, the drugs and sex and rock and roll of the days. And by the way, I love music, so I'm not condemning music, but, but just in a subculture that really drew men and women's hearts and souls away from the Lord. And God's using you to bring a lot of those to him or back to him. And, and we praise God for you. And it's exciting to be a part of that ministry with you, brother. Um, so delighted to be working with both of you and the other two that uh, aren't here with us today, but um, sure God will arrange it first soon. 
Yeah, yeah, very, very soon. Well, folks, listen, from all three of us, we want to thank you for tuning in to this uh, first edition that we've done this together. We hope to have many more like this, just bringing you some supernatural and scriptural and biblical and prophetic insight from God's Word. We hope that you enjoyed it. We hope you will tune in and enjoy us in our next edition. And again, Messianic Rabbi Zeph Peratt, we love you. God bless you. Pastor Casper McLeod, we love you. God bless you. My name is Carl Gallups, pastor of uh, a church on the Gulf Coast, Hickory Hammock Baptist Church. You can find me at carlgallops.com and it's good to be with you this day. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. Gods of the final kingdom didn't know, there are things he still doesn't know. doesn't know.